Dotty. Okay, I'm going to jump in. Most people are probably here who are going to uh, join us live. We normally get around 100, 150, so this looks good. Today, folks, we are going to make a project called Spinning Accordion. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to blow it. They spin. So they're like little double-sided pieces of artwork. And um, when you hold them up to the light, it looks really nice too because um, the little panels that I made are transparent. So I'm not sure you could actually see that, but um, if I held it up to the window, you could. So this is, um, I don't, well, it's, I don't know. Maybe it is in someone's book. I have no idea. I haven't seen it before in a book, um, but it sort of is inspired by my card making days, which I've kind of gone back to a little bit. Um, it's inspired by my card making days where um, we used to do spinner cards and I just thought they were really fun. So that's what we're going to make today. Um, it's inspired by our monthly challenge, which is transparency. Um, last month's challenge was black and white, and we had some amazing, amazing it, um, entries to that. It's not a competition or anything. It's just, you know, a, a prompt, as it were. But um, we had some amazing ones, and um, Mickey has made us made up, like, uh, some collages of some of the ones that just really caught our eye. So I will be sharing those um, soon, at some point, probably on my blog in the next uh, week or so. So thank you, Mickey, for doing that. And... Uh, so this month's challenge is transparent. And so um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be kind of touching upon that. So um, I figured this this uh, book structure works well in a couple of ways. It's got windows, which kind of, you know, um, ties into the transparent thing. And then my little um, jelly prints inside were made on um, onion skin paper, which I'll talk about a little, uh, little bit, which is transparent too translucent transparent I don't know there's several different words so um instructions printed instructions are available to go with this video you, you probably need both um printed instructions are available Mickey will put the link in the um comments but I also have it here if you um want to quickly write it down let me just have a little I'm still still drinking my breakfast because protein shake today um cherry and peach it's really good okay I am going to switch my camera over to the other desk so we can start our project um this project's really nice actually it doesn't require a lot of tools um this requires you know a long piece of paper for your accordion um it requires something to go in the middle you know the, the center panel Oops, let me do it the right way around you're going to need um some art think about what kind of artwork you would like to put in the middle of the um card of the of the panels card i'm obsessed and uh what else do you need you'll need some thread you'll need some scrap paper a piece of cardstock or like a cereal box to make a template and um a glue stick so let's see Carol says she could use her encaustic mono prints. Oh, that would be really nice. Because imagine the light coming through like um, encaustic prints, especially if you just use like the plain medium. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, good morning, Linda. Good morning, Christine. All right, folks, I'm going to switch my camera around. Um, because it's winter, the sun is really low on the window. So there's quite a lot of sun coming in. So I've put up um, a barrier over the window, but hopefully it doesn't make it too dark for you. Um, so I apologize. I'm hoping that it will be okay. There we go. Do you see that big shaft of light? I couldn't quite cover it all up. Um, so I can will continue to see your comments. So as I work, I will um, check. As I work, I'll check the comments and answer as many questions as I can. Anna says, where do you get the metal spaces? They are available from Hollanders. Um, they may well be out of stock. I would love to find another source for those, though. I'm just moving everything around so I can see what you folks have to say. Can I move in the microphone so you can hear me? There we go. I might still grab my water, too. And if you hear background noise, I apologize, but um, it's a pandemic and Andy is home on a Zoom call as well. So um, that's just life, right? Okay, so let's start out by um, 
taking our piece of accordion paper. So this could be um, handmade paper, watercolour paper. If you could do watercolour, do around 140. Um, a mixed media paper. This is, and I know you're going to ask me, so I'm going to tell you, and Nikki has a link. This is a Cardi paper, which is a handmade paper from India. And it is 210 GSM, which I would say is around a little less than 140, it feels like. So this is, and it's a large sheet, 22 by um, 30, I believe. And um, I tore it down into four sheets. Uh, and because it is a handmade paper, it doesn't have a grain. But if this were a piece of a machine made paper, I would want to make sure that my grain runs this way so that my folds were nice and clean. If I was going against the grain, um, my paper would crack. So, hi, Kathy. Thank you, Nikki. Oh, thank you, Celeste. Celeste says, I book binding has hard metal, uh, hard plastic spaces. Fantastic, I might reach out to them. Okay, so we're going to fold a eight panel accordion. If you need a reminder on how to do this, I will um, show you. You can see I've got torn edges here. If you want to have cut edges, go ahead. What you want to just be a little mindful of is these end pieces. These are quite wavy, frankly. Um, I'm going to trim them up because while they look really cute, it's actually going to make my um, folding a little bit difficult because that's quite, well, it's quite, it's quite like I say, it's going to make my folding a lot harder. It's quite uneven, that's what I was looking for. So let's just get rid of that. So if you need a reminder on how to make the eight fold accordion, this is how you're going to do it. You take a piece of paper and you're going to fold in half, put the ends together. You can see this okay. Let me move the camera in a little bit. There we go. Actually, I could do it this way, couldn't I? So you can see it a little better. So this is how you're going to get a perfect eight panel accordion. I can't do it on that side, sorry. You can bone fold. And then you're going to open it up to get your mountain fold. We want to create two more mountain folds, one here and one here. And the way we'll do that is by flipping this over and folding it into the center. So there we go. So we've got to, what you, the first thing you have to think about is three mountain folds. And use that center fold as your guide. Using my finger to press it down and my bone folder. So now I have one, two, three mountain folds. See that? Then what we do is we have these mountains jump over the edge. This is how I remember it. So let's move this back a tiny bit so you can see. My mountain folds are going to jump over the edge. I'm going to take this mountain fold and bring it up to the edge of my paper. Oh, you can't see that. This mountain fold to the edge of the paper. So there we go. And then underneath, this is what it looks like. Third mountain fold to the edge of the paper. Crease, see underneath, my panels are forming. You can bone fold if you like. Third mountain fold, bring to the edge. The paper, this again. And then fold over that last panel. So you can see now why I trim that up, right? And that, my friends, will give you a perfect eight panel accordion and it's all folded in the right direction it's not you don't have to refold it so there you go you can see that okay i should have got my other um tripod out there we go so there's your eight panel accordion let's see um kim says cardi is her favorite paper in the world i'm pretty keen on it too actually and good morning sidella eight panel accordion there we go so I want you to create that first. I'm going to set that one aside because by the magic of television, I, I did one earlier. Actually, I'm not going to set it aside just yet. So the next step is to create these um, windows. And I'm going to show you how I create one and then you'll repeat them. You're only going to do them on six of the panels. So you're going to leave the um, front page and the last page solid in one, two, three, four, five, six. If you make a longer, like um, 
book that's more than eight panels, then by all means, you know, it, um, you can do more, but just remember to leave these last two um, solid, just for stability. So to figure this out, you are going to take a piece of, sorry, I keep banging my lamp, um, just scrap cardstock, um, like a cereal box or something. And what you're gonna do is create a template, which is the same size as your panel. And you could measure, but you could also, turn this way. you could also just use this as a guide. So that torn edge may give us a little bit of trouble. So it's going to be that tall. So let's cut it. And in fact, I'm going to cut two. So use that whole piece. So this is the height. And then let's cut another one. I think I cut that the wrong way. Never mind. No problem. Then do the width. I'm just being a tad lazy and not measuring. It's kind of nice. Cut this out. There we go. Just get rid of the extra. So now we have a template for that window. It's the exact same size as our panel. So whatever size your panels are, you're going to make a piece of cardstock. You could use scrap paper, but I would use something a little bit sturdier if I was you. Make it exactly the same size. And then we're going to give ourselves a three quarter inch border all the way around. So this border all the way around here, we're going to make it three quarters of an inch. So that is where those um, spaces come in handy. But honestly, just use a... Um, if you don't have something like this, and I know lots of people don't, you can um, make your own with a piece of um, book board. I'm going to mark these out. Oops, what am I doing? Am I doing? You know why I'm just I'm trying to talk and to do stuff at the same time. Don't do that. Mark out the three quarter inch border on the template. We don't want pencil on that book. Do we? Um, like Celeste says, you can buy them in plastic. Um, you can just use your ruler to measure out this centre panel with three quarters of an inch all the way around. Grab your knife again. And then cut out that window. So that's going to give us the larger window on the accordion. And then what we're going to do is create a second one of these to use as a guide for the collage piece in the middle. So here's our little window. Let's just ignore that piece that I just did. I'm going to take your accordion. You're going to place this on here. You're going to mark out that center piece in pencil and then remove it. So I'll just do one to show you. Make a light pencil mark. Let me just put that down, weigh this down so it doesn't get in your way. Light pencil mark right here. And then remove it with a sharp blade. I put a new blade in this yesterday. So um, particularly if you're using a heavier weight paper, you're going to want a new sharp blade to cut out that panel. So you're going to repeat that in all of the six panels. And lucky for you, I did it yesterday so that you don't have to. And then save these for another project. You can do that six times to create your window. We really can set that aside now. Bye bye. All right, so here's the one I made yesterday with all the panels cut out. Here's my template that I used. So it just takes a little bit of patience. So let's talk about what we're going to put in the center. So I, let's tidy up a little bit. So I made some jelly prints several, about a month ago, uh, and I used for my jelly prints, um, 
something called oh god my mind's gone blank <laughs> um, my mind's gone completely blank what's it called mickey this thing paper my goodness what's it called lovely she'll tell me in a second this very thin paper which is used for um onion skillets called good grief honestly does anyone else do that like their brain just goes blank um onion skin paper so this used to be used for typing for doing carbon copies do you remember some of us learned to type on a typewriter i did so i have a ton of this you can buy on etsy and in fact mickey has a link to a bunch of um so search i did on etsy but lots of people have this and it's like a strong tracing paper it's really i'm tugging on this it's really strong so i did some jelly prints on that um i think i had some paint left over from something so i just made all these jelly prints using stencils and i think it was from the paste paper retreat i had some acrylic paint left i just made some interesting um prints so different stencils different sort of mark making you know the kind of thing this kind of thing so i thought this would be great for my panels because my panels are going to be double-sided so um but of course you could use the not, your panels don't have to be transparent it's just kind of it just fits in with the uh, theme this month um they could be absolutely be just collage panels they could be photographs they could be encaustic um any anything you like little watercolors but they've got to be uh, double-sided to make this work so we're going to make ourselves a second jig a second jig i'm going to take your piece of cardstock that is the same size as the panel we're going to make another one of these so let's just hold on here's my ritual i did this yesterday so here's, here's my first panel that we use to create the three quarter inch border now and if you want to know what three quarter inch is i think it's 19 millimeters my metric friends and then here's our second template we're going to make template number two and we're going to give ourselves a one inch border and so what that what's what that's going to do is give us some space for this um to spin so i'm going to take my one inch jig you could take a one inch ruler a one inch piece of um book board oh a quilting ruler would really like work well or like a gridded ruler that would save you time i just like these and then i'm going to cut out this centerpiece again Oops. cut out that centerpiece to give me a guide in which to lay on top of my chosen papers and then choose what areas i would like i'm going to do this 12 times so just look through to kind of lay them down you can see that just move this a little bit just move this around choose which ones you want you can mark them in pencil and then cut them out i actually found this is fairly sturdy so i actually found i could cut right up against this cardstock if you're using paper you couldn't but if you're using something fairly sturdy um you could actually just cut directly against there so let's see if there's any questions thank you onion skin honestly it is similar to vellum kin honestly i don't i really and amazon sells it so for this thank you and mickey just gave a um definition of what onion skin is in case anyone's interested because i really didn't know um it was given to me by somebody very kindly so you want to cut out 12 of those assuming you've got an eight panel accordion which we have let's flip this up a bit now assume you've got an eight panel accordion with six windows then you will cut 12 of these if for some reason you have a bigger accordion with more windows you're going to cut one per pair so if you had 10 windows you would have 20 of these i think that makes sense so these are curling a little bit because the paper's quite thin 
that's okay. And these are the ones that I used my template for and cut out last night. So you can just see them right here. Let's set these all aside. So the next step is to um, pair them up, decide which ones are going together, which all. There isn't really a front or a back because they spin, but I'm going to put those together. I'm going to put these together. Just set them to one side. Those are going to go together. And then you want to decide like what order you want them in. So you want to get that all organized before you start applying them. These two. I want those first, or that last. Okay, I've got them in the right order. So I'm all ready. I'm prepared. The next thing you need is some thin thread. So you could make this a design feature um, by using maybe a metallic thread. Um, I'm using this hand dyed thread. It's very thin thread, it's just thin sewing thread that you would use in a sewing machine. And um, you know, I'm just gonna take down that um, banner off the bottom so you can see. This is just thin sewing thread. But if you really wanted to make a feature of the thread, you could use something more obvious, but you don't want anything too thick. You know, one strand of embroidery floss would be fine. Um, pearl cotton would be too heavy. You want something that almost disappears. And if you do want something that disappears, I'm sure there's that sort of clear thread, um, or not clear thread. I'm sure there's very, you could use white or whatever you wanted, but you can, you can barely see this um, yellowy thread on mine. So just choose a thread that you, like the look of, just read, read your sewing stash. I'm gonna lay down our accordion now, which is the front. So this is my front. So I'm gonna flip it over. Oh shoot, I'll just throw those about. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've just lost two. This is the back. Let's weigh this down so it doesn't get in my way. So what you're going to do is take a piece of thread and then center it over the panel. Cut it. You can probably barely see that, right? Here's my thread. I'm going to center over my panel. Now you could... Um, you could measure the center or mark it on your template. I trust my eyeballs to get it in the center. And we're gonna attach it on the back of the um, window. So there are several ways you could do this. Uh, you could use washi tape. You could use clear tape. Um, do you know what I'm gonna use? I'm use, you know, white mailing labels. You know, these kind of mailing, these sticky labels. Um, I actually have these large ones, which I'm going to use, but I, ha I had an extra one lying around. So I'm going to use these white labels because I've got a white um, base. They're not going to uh, show up. If you have a colored base, they may well show up. So you might want to either color them or um, use another thin paper. You could also use um, copier paper with a tiny bit of PVA or um, double stick tape, anything really to adhere the, the piece of cotton, the top of the panel and the bottom of the panel. I remember we're working on the back, but I'm just using these tiny pieces of mailing label. And because the cotton's so thin and um, my panels are translucent, it, these mailing stickers work really great. So I'm just gonna stick it on the back, just like that. You see that? Let's see. Let's put the sticker right there. Let's weigh that down. And let's cut another little sticker. So you could use, you know, those sheets of 30. Um, you know, you always there's always one or two left, right? Or ones that you haven't printed right. Remove the backing and stick it down. So do you want to when you stick down the second piece of tape or um, label, pull this nice and taut like this, center it, and then hold it in place. There we go. Let me see if there's any questions before I carry on. 
There is such a thing as transparent sewing through. Thank you. I figured there would be. Yep, deli paper would be wonderful, Barbara. Uh, tracing paper. Yeah, anything. And it doesn't, this this panel does not have to be transparent. It's just, um, I like it like that. But yours can be uh, solid, solid paper. So you're going to repeat this for all of the panels. I'm not going to do each, all six. You're going to repeat this for all of the panels. I'm just going to leave this thread here for now. Let's flip it over. It's going to um, fold this this way so you can see it. Hopefully you can see the thread right here. Uh, hold on, let's grab something colored. You can see that thread right down the center there. Then we're going to take our two prints. These are the two I'm going to put in first. We really do need something heavy here. This is a covered brick. I'm going to weigh this down. I'm going to take our print for the back. I'm going to just slide it underneath, just like that, with the front facing down. Okay, that's our first print face down. We're going to grab some glue stick. Now, um, you could use a um, different type of adhesive if you would like to, uh, because these are very thin, glue stick is going to work great for me. I wouldn't do really thick PVA though. I might do a double stick tape if you wanted to, or um, like a tape runner. I think PVA is going to um, be too wet and make things curl. But if you have like the encaustic and it's quite heavy, I would use PVA. If you're using something thin like this, I would just use a drier adhesive. I'm applying glue stick generously to the back. And then I'm gonna sandwich it, or I'm gonna sandwich the thread between those two little pieces. So there's no glue on the back because these are fairly fragile and thin. I'm just centering them on each other and centering them on the thread. That's my bone folder. And I am, um, make sure you um, bone fold right down the center as well as the sides so that you catch that thread with the adhesive. And then you're gonna keep doing that for all of the six panels. And when you are done, and flip it over and trim out the thread. So you can't see the ends. And then it because you're going to be manipulating this, you're going to want to um, refold it and rebone fold and making sure those panels are flat. And then um, perhaps just want to weigh it down overnight. Uh, particularly if these start to curl for any reason. So say you've got, um, you're using panels which are maybe two different materials. One may curl upwards because it's heavier. So you may need to um, press those to dry as well. So let's look at this final one. So here is the final um, book. I'm just laying it down. You can see that they spin around. Once it's all dried, oh gosh, there we go. You can see because we made these inner panels smaller than our window, they spin around on the um, thread. And I'm gonna, I found a really nice poem this morning actually that I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do on the typewriter and then glue onto these two. So I really feel like it needs some words. Um, it's, and the poem's all about light, so. Um, it feels kind of appropriate as it was epiphany yesterday.